Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these large paper tassels from six by six paper, or in all honesty, you can use any size paper that you have. I have popped two of the paper tassels that I made in a little package here, just to give you some inspiration and some ideas already on how you can package them up to make them look special if you are gifting them or selling them, you know, you can have a little pack of three, for example, in your Etsy store or at the craft fair or whatever. It's just a really nice idea and you can customize it to a size you want. You can have little ones, you can have bigger ones, you can have the beads down the bottom. You don't have to have the beads down the bottom. I'm going to show you all the steps. I also thought that they would look nice on the side of a journal like this as a little paper tassel especially if you kind of match them. This is completely by accident that this has happened, but I have this beautiful cover here. It's just a cover, I haven't made the journal yet. And then this beautiful paper tassel that would go perfectly nice together. And you can just attach something like this to your cover using a bulb pin, right? I mean, I'm just throwing out ideas. I haven't really thought this through, but that's one way of attaching it to your cover but it is a paper tassel after all so if you do attach it to the side of your journal there's always a chance of it you know the paper ripping and bending and stuff so you most definitely can follow these exact same steps using a fabric instead of paper you do it the exact same way otherwise i also think these will look beautiful as christmas tree ornaments so you can have it on your christmas tree you can package it up nicely like this have it as a stocking stuffer for your friend's christmas tree i just think they look so beautiful and i hope you will too so let me show you how to make them okay i'm using these six by six papers from taperology i'm going to leave a link to the website below and a coupon code but you most definitely can use whatever you have in your possession it can be double-sided paper or single-sided like i'm going to use and it doesn't have to be six by six it can be really any size it doesn't have to be a square it can be a rectangle it really none of it matters so you just use what you have all right so the first thing i need to do is cut this into strips so that I can of course create this tassel effect but of course you don't want to cut all the way through so what I'm going to do is I turn it the other way and I'm going to mark about a centimeter or half an inch it doesn't really matter from above just so I know where to cut up to here we go so I drew myself a line so now I know when I'm cutting I stop at the line the first thing that I'm going to do is remove a whole section over here. It's going to make sense in a moment. So this very first section here, I'm going to completely cut off so that I have this little piece left over. I'm going to need this when I start rolling the paper tassel. You'll see that in a moment. So now I'm going to do all of my other cuts. Another thing you might want to do at this step is if you want to have completely straight edges like this down the bottom, just leave it as it is. If you want to have slightly uneven edges down the bottom of your tassel like these here, then what I do at this step before I start cutting is I just cut a little sort of uh, wiggly line down the bottom, just like this. So I don't know if you can see that, but I've cut a little wiggly line here just so it's not so straight down the bottom. All right, now going back to this part, you can go ahead and cut your strips using scissors go, going all the way up to that line. But I found it easier and quicker to do it with my ruler like this and my X-Acto knife. And I'm using this cutting pad underneath because I, I can see the measurements. So I'm cutting about half a centimeter all the way down. You can do a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch. You can just eyeball it. They don't all have to be the same, but the most important thing is that you're just cutting this whole paper into strips and stopping at that top line. Or rather, if you're doing it this way, if you're cutting with the X-Acto knife, you would start at the top line and cut all the way through, all the way down. And here we go. So this is what it looks like. You have your whole paper cut into little strips and you have that top bit intact, of course. And we have this little bit here. And now you're going to see why we need this. So let's go to the next step. 
first thing we need to do is apply a little bit of glue up the top here or you can use double-sided tape which is what I'm going to use you don't apply any glue on this little bit that's sticking out so you just start from there all the way to the end and here we go I have my double-sided tape applied and I didn't put it on here and now I'm not going to remove the whole thing I mean you can but I just kind of work in steps next thing you need is something to roll around I'm using these what are they called wooden skewers you can use a straw you can use a thin pen or maybe a little paintbrush if you've got one like this anything that can be of assistance at this point so now you want to start rolling so I'm gonna start right here at the start and this is why we needed to leave that little bit of extra it's just easier and also why I didn't apply any glue on there because it would glue onto this and we don't want that and now we just start rolling as I'm rolling I'm removing that double-sided tape and also as you're rolling keep checking over here that everything is level mine isn't all that level but that's okay it, it doesn't have to be perfect and just keep rolling as tight as you possibly can I've now completely removed that double-sided tape backing and I'm gonna finish off roll all the way to the end and here we go and you're left with something that looks like this pretty cool so now you can remove whatever tool you were using and that's why we didn't apply glue at the start so you can very easily remove your little rolling tool and here is the tassel how easy was that now we have to make it into something pretty so what you need is some string like this and some beads and a little bit of thread because we need to put these beads onto our string which might be a little bit thick so it might be a bit difficult to bead them on because we have to bead it on to a double so we find the middle of our string like this and now we have to pop our top beads up here what I mean is these beads that sit above the tassel and they have to go through that double thread up here so the easy way to do that it might be a little bit difficult to try and get your bead through something like this so the way that I do it I use a little bit of thread just you know your usual thin thread and I'm gonna loop it in through there tie a knot here we go so this is what's happening over here I think you might know where I'm going with this but it's much easier to loop those beads or to thread the beads onto a thin thread than it is onto this thick twine that I'm using but still your beads need to have a large enough opening to go through this twine so some beads obviously if they have a little very little opening it's not going to work so here we go there's my first bead put it through the thread and now I'm gonna push it and there we go it's on there and I'm going to repeat the same thing so of course I've chosen my beads in advance the way that I want them to go or the way that I want them to look and I'm simply getting them on there you see that's going to be the top the top part of the tassel so this is the last bead and there we go these are all of the beads I'm going to use on the top of my tassel so now I can get rid of this thread I don't need that anymore and now this is what we have so I'm going to tie a knot up here we are creating this loop up the top and I'm simply going to tie a knot really depends on how large you want that loop to be I did about maybe an inch the knot is about an inch away from the top and push those beads up and once you've pushed all of those beads up to that knot you make another knot right there underneath the beads you want it to sit right underneath that first bead so this might be a little bit difficult to get right so I use a little tool like this to help me push it all the way up and there we go that's what that looks like 
Our next step is to pop this through our tassel. So I'm going to grab these loose ends down here and I'm going to insert them right there through the top of the tassel all the way down and sort of push it through like this. And that's what's going to be happening here. So that knot is going to enter right through. It doesn't matter if it doesn't enter right through. I mean, it's no big deal, but that helps sort of that knot will help keep everything in place. So now what we have to do is add a little bit of glue onto the knot or a little bit of glue in here just to make sure that top is glued in there. Some of the ones that I've already made, I used tacky glue. So if you don't have a glue gun, which is what I'm going to use for this one, if you don't have hot glue, you can still use whatever glue you have. You just apply quite a bit of glue onto that knot, a little bit in there, just pop it in and then push that in and wait for it to dry. I like using the hot glue gun for this project because it dries instantaneously. The only thing I don't like is waiting for it to heat up. So I would suggest if you're making a whole heap of these, you make them all up to this point and then when you're ready for the hot glue gun, you do them all at once. Otherwise, like I said, if you don't have the hot glue gun, any glue will do. Okay, my hot glue is ready. I'm going to pop some hot glue here and push this down before it dries and get rid of any excess of glue. And there we go, that's nice in place. It's a little bit messy under there. That's the thing with hot glue, it can be a little bit messy, but that's okay because I will be adding a little bit of lace or something in there. But before I do that, I wanna find the middle and I'm gonna pop a little bit of hot glue right in there as well, just to make sure. Just like that, I know you can't see, but I have to work quickly here and I'm kind of keeping this string or the twine in a straight line like that and pushing over here. This is all really, you know, you don't have to be so pedantic about this, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, so we've got hot glue up there, hot glue in there, and I only really use the tiny, tiny little bit. You, you can barely see it, but it's in there. And now I'm done with the hot glue. I kind of love and hate working with hot glue. I love it because it's so quick and I hate it because of it's a little bit messy. All right, at this point, if you choose, you can just completely get rid of this, the twine. If I was getting rid of it, I would probably tie a little knot here, just in there. Just tie a little knot and cut all this excess off so you can't see it. But I really love adding these beads down the bottom. So I'm not going to cut that twine off. I'm going to string some more beads on. Before I start stringing, I'm going to tie a knot. You know, you, you might want your beads down here. You might want your beads all the way up here because it's already a long tassel i don't want to go kind of too much down because then it becomes really long so i like to tie a knot just here where the tassel ends or thereabouts so here we go this is where my tassel ends i could have gone up a little bit more so maybe with this one here i'm gonna go up a little bit more I don't know what happened, let's see. So that's kind of what they look. You you do whatever you want, I guess. You, However you want it to look and however you, long you want it to be. And now I'm gonna add some beads, of course. And now you see this knot prevents the beads from disappearing up into the tassel. And now I need another knot right underneath to keep the beads in place. If I can get it right underneath, that's kind of what I'm going for. And here we go. That's what that looks like. A knot right above the beads and a knot right below. And I'm going to repeat the process on the other piece of twine. Beads are on, tying the knot. I'm going to use my tool to bring that knot all the way up and then push it up. And there we go. Done. Now I just want to cut that excess off. And this is what we have so far, top of the tassel, then we've got the paper tassel, and then we've got some beads down the bottom. And now to finish this off, I mean, it already looks nice just as it is, but I like to add a little bit of lace. You can have a thin piece of lace just sitting underneath like this. I really like this trim because it's got the gold and I've been using it on all of my um, tassels so far. It looks really nice just like that. You can use a wider lace like this. That also looks quite nice. You can layer the lace like this. 
to make it even more fun. So this is, you know, you have fun with this. You can even use some bling like this. Why not? You know, to make it even more rich like that. That would look quite nice as well. But I'm just going to stick with what I've done with all of mine so far. And I'm going to use this beautiful trim that I have. So I only need a tiny little piece. And I have to admit, this trim is very fiddly to work with because it kind of starts unraveling and getting all funny. So a little bit of fray stop would work there, but I haven't really been using it because who's got the time, you know, to do all that. So now all I need to do is glue this on. So I'm just going to pop some glue all on that section. I don't like using hot glue for this because it can seep everywhere and be visible. I'm going to pop this down. Maybe pop a little bit more glue onto this part that's going to overlap. Here we go. I've got glue all over the place on my hands and everywhere. Once it's dry, come in and get rid of any messy bits. This glue that I was using dries clear and sets quickly, which is why I was using it. Any glue will do, but I just wanted something that's going to keep this in place while it dries. And then it's going to keep it in place because it's dry, right? And there we have it. The tassel is done. How easy is that? And of course, I think they look so beautiful, especially when packaged nicely like this. And of course, you can make them any size you want. You can have little ones. They don't, it all depends on the size of the paper that you use. So this is six by six, like I said. You can use little offcuts. This was just a little offcut and it was less than six by six. So it's a little bit shorter. As you can see, tiny, a little bit shorter. But the point is you can have a play, you can make them all different sizes. You can completely skip this step, you know, adding beads down the bottom, but I think it looks really nice. And also, of course, you can play around with the kind of string that you use. Here I've got some gold string that I used instead of that twine. I used twine on all of the others. I'll bring them a little bit closer so you can sort of see the details. Just using some beads. These are all beads from broken jewelry and stuff that I have in my stash. There's these ones here. This is just a brad holding it down. In case you're wondering, you can see just a little brad. It's a nice fancy brad that I wasn't sure what I'm going to use that in. And I thought it's perfect for this project. So basically what I did here is just some cardstock like this. And I punched some corners out. I have this nice corner puncher. One of these, I'm not really sure what it's called, but it's from Fiskars. And you can just round the corners just using your scissors. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but a little bit of fancy helps, of course. And then, of course, once that's done, I just popped a little brad through. So here's a little brad and your cardstock. And basically, you just put, well, you open up the brad first, and then you put your top loop through the brad like that. Pop it through your cardstock, flatten it down at the back like that. And that's what's keeping the tassel in place. I think it looks beautiful. Love it. And then I popped it inside this cellophane little bag and I keep all of these are all from stickers. You know how stickers come in these individual, well some stickers do. Anyway, lots of products come in these individual plastic bags and I always keep them. I have a whole heap. So when I'm making projects, I have, you know, I have something to use. I don't have to go and buy plastic, which I wouldn't anyway. So there we go. Those are the large paper tassels. The thing that takes the longest is choosing the beads up the top. You know, all of the all of the other stuff is really easy. You're just kind of cutting the paper. That might take a little bit of time. But I think choosing what goes with what, it's always the most tedious part of any project, I guess. And for me, that's the part that took longest. I think if you have a beautiful selection of beads that all match and go perfectly together, then you won't have a problem. I have a mix match of beads from broken jewelry and sometimes it's it's really hard to find what looks good with what. But there you have it. I hope you feel inspired. Please let me know what you think. Have you made these before? I've never made them before. I've seen little ones and it's been on my to-do list for ages. And then I just had an idea to make large ones because why not? If you have any questions, please post them down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. And, of course, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!